seems to fall straight up. You don't have to wiggle or angle or anything. And you see the rear just has plastic retainers. There's the front has the plastic plus one metal. Now, I want to say the older models may have had more than one metal clip, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I know it seems like every year they make these a little bit cheaper. <laughs> but both of them just pull straight up. And at the ends, they kind of clip to the next piece of trim, which is why you really need to pull these out. While I've got them out, I'm going to scrub them down and soak them in some 303. You see here on the front side, there's a little lip that wraps around. So you need to pull that around to get that off of there. On the rear side, it's, it's also present, although on mine it wasn't offering any resistance at all. Here's a good view of what's retaining it you have at the top. Those just kind of wrap around, and then you have the metal clips. There's three, two in the front, one in the back. It also has these little things that wrap around the metal here. They, they're not going to give you any resistance. They just kind of hold it in place once it's all in. And then you have this guide pin that just, again, aligns everything for you. So you don't want to break this piece off. You just want to make sure you pull straight out away from the B-pillar so you don't break off any of these clips or that guide pin. And uh, like I said, it helps to pull the weather stripping away. Now on mine, because I've put those lights on there and didn't put any kind of quick disconnect feature, I can't really remove mine from the car. But opening this up does expose you'll see several different wire connectors. If your rear windows are not working, it's very possible one of these is disconnected. It may be disconnected on the passenger side, it may be disconnected on the driver side, it may be on both. I'm, if memory is correct, it's the brown one, but I'm not 100% on that since it's been a lot of years since I reconnected it. It's also possible that it's this one, but like I said, if you, once you pull this off of here, if you see one that's disconnected, that's probably the reason your rear windows are not working. So you pop this piece up, and that exposes the Torx bolt there. And there's a Torx bolt on the bottom holding the seat belt in. And then you've got this Phillips screw that's retaining that uh, guide if you want to call it right there all right you see after you unbolt the two that just slides out and then you have the electrical connector holding it here and it just presses on there to release and then I've just got to remove the guide and then the whole assembly will come out of the vehicle so to get the little guide out you see it's got that hook there, it hooks in and locks into place and then the Phillips screw just holds it. So when you unscrew the Phillips screw, then just slide it forward and it'll come out. And of course you need to undo that Torx bolt. So there's actually three Torx bolts, I think I said two originally. And then you can remove it completely from the car. I mix this with hot water, laundry soap, OxyClean. A little bit of color safe bleach you can use whatever you want to use do is just take the whole seat belt get it in there again you want to make sure that this doesn't retract on you you're not going to be able to get the entire seat belt in here most likely but you can get almost all of it
clamped it to the side of the bucket. And that way, you get the maximum amount in here. And then I'll just use a carpet brush. Scrub. So you have it clean to your satisfaction, then you want to transfer it to a rinse bucket. You don't want it to hit the ground or you may have wasted all your washing time. So. See that water is really dark. So I'm rinsing it in warm water. You can rinse it in cold probably as well. Uh, in case you're wondering, yeah, I have a hose that I can switch to warm or hot water any temperature Did that for baiting dogs so there's the setup I can flip that on to have cold water or off and then when it's off it has the little shower nozzle there that will mix from hot and cold to get whatever temperature I want and lastly you want to make sure that it's thoroughly dry you can use a towel which is what I did I just dried it uh, obviously you can use a blower wet dry vac hair dryer or just let it hang dry but I use the combination of the towel and the hang drying it's a warm day today so it's it's pretty well dry at this point so the other thing I did was clean all the dust and dirt off of there as best I could by hand. I didn't get any of this wet. I didn't want to spray it down. Although, believe me, the thought crossed my mind. I just totally hosed this off. And then I also spritzed a little dry lubricant into here, hoping that that will help. I was concerned because these say do not remove the plastic and so I did not remove that although it's like the fact that it says do not remove makes me want to remove it just to see what's going to happen <laughs> but I left that on there uh, because my fear was if I did remove it maybe something would spring out of there or whatever and never get it back in installation is going to be the reverse of removal you want to make sure that you keep your seat belt straight so that it won't be knotted up when you're done. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the Torx bolt that goes into the floor. And then the little guide there. Then the top and then finally the mechanism at the bottom. And you notice I'm keeping it clipped open. Also not a bad idea to go ahead and wipe down, clean out, vacuum, whatever you want to do to get it clean. I'll go ahead and wipe this down and 303 it while I've got it apart. I clean the uh, inside of this back panel here that was full of dust.
So once you get it back in, I just put everything in finger tight for now. You want to test and make sure that everything's working the way it's supposed to. Looking good. All the electrical is reconnected. So I'll go ahead and torque everything down. The torque setting for the Torx bolts is 30 foot pounds. And if you care, the uh, little Phillips screw that holds the guide is 18 inch pounds. Then we're going to reinstall this and make sure everything lines up properly and then just snap it into place. You notice I've pulled the uh, weather stripping out of the way and make this a lot easier. Seatbelt still working, so I will put the weather stripping back on. And then we just snap in these panels. Just line them up and snap them straight down. And if you get any resistance at all, don't push because it probably means you got a tab that's bent up. These tabs are very easy to get bent. Almost every Crown Vic I've seen, at least one of these is broken off or somebody has just tried to smash it in. So, like I said, line them up and then snap them down. And they should also lock to the trim around them.